Hello, and you're very welcome to the Jim Mac Podcast. I'm John Mann. Of course, the podcast brought to you by Orgrat.com. You can rule Jim Podcast. Get 15% off on their website. We're well into championship. The sun is shining. Get yourself organized on Orgrat.com. You will not be disappointed. And this evening, I'm joined by GA Sports Tracker app owner Kevin Kennedy to talk about last weekend's championship action and, of course, this weekend's championship action. The sun is shining. Pigs will be flying next. God knows what's going to happen. Mr. Kennedy, how are you? I'm dead on, John. I was thinking the party's meant to be torrential rain tomorrow, but sure, we'll, we'll enjoy it while I was lost. Oh, oh, very good. Did you have a good weekend, my man? I see a bit of colour in that face. I did. I was out in the bed a wee bit. Um, we caravan up the coast there, so we managed to get up to that for a few days. And it was just burning down by the water every day, messing about in the beach, the cages and stuff. So, good weekend in football. You know, it's championship season's now up and running. Um, it, was just, it almost brings the best out of us, doesn't it? Mm, absolutely, absolutely. Well, Jesus, hopefully, the, you know, the, the, I hope the track wrap's going. You're, you've moved into a caravan. Jesus, you, you didn't tell me the sad news. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bankrupt. <laughs> You're like Wes Brown. Joe used to be United for Wes. People with money have caravans these days, or so I'm told. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, sir. Very good. Yeah, my God. Yeah, the weather over the weekend. I, I obviously got to the Cavan Tyrone game on Sunday, and my God, the sun was splitting stones. And oh, the crowd, the ice cream fans, it really did feel like a championship vibe. Uh, not like the morning game. The weather was good. People are in good form. You know, it, it really just did feel like, okay, this is the start of the championship now. And of course, obviously, the, the weather in the Republic and obviously up the north is very, very unpredictable the last while. But, you know, it now set, feels like the start of the championship. It's what took three weeks. Yeah, yeah. It's not to say the football, you know, I think that the we got good entertainment between the Cavan and the Monaghan game in the preliminary round. It's not to say the football has been bad, but just with the weather coming in, it was a bad weekend for football last weekend. A lot of the, the old slobbers came out on social media and says how bad it was, but they were firmly put back in their boxes that weekend there with the weather out and some great spectacles on show. Mm, mm, we've got the shorts out as well, so hopefully no one was offended by the the chicken legs on Sunday, <laughs> Kevy. <laughs> Bit of hot sauce. <laughs> oh, the brother was saying, "Get churches on." He'd be a very old fashioned. Don't be wearing them shorts. Right, Kevy, great. See your good form. The sun is shining, so let's crack into it. Obviously, the GA Dunny Football Team of the Week for this week was Dunny Gold's Sean Patton in between the sticks, a full back line of Thrones, Michael McCarron and Dunny Gold's Brendan McCall and Cavan's Brian O'Connell, a half back line of Dunny Gold's Ryan McHugh, Kerry's Tom O'Sullivan and Dunny Gold's Darrell O'Boyle, and a midfield of Mayo, Stephen Cohen and Sligo's Patrick O'Connor, and then a half forward line of Clare's Aaron Griffin. Goal was Robert, Rob Finnerty and then Kerry Sean O'Shea and then a full forward line of Cork's Brian Hurley, Tyrone's Derek Hanneman and Mayo's Ryan O'Donoghue. And of course, the GA Dunny Football Player of the Week was Dunny Goals, uh, Derek O'Boyle. No real complaints with that. He had a fantastic game against Derry. Very, very hard to argue with that this weekend or this week, even Mr. Kenny's was thoughts on the team of the week. Yeah, um, great team selection, you know, good variety across all the games that were played there. Um, Kerry, you know, the, Thomas Alvin, I thought was brilliant for Kerry over the weekend. I think he, he scored an off two and set up a few as well. Um, I thought Ryan O'Donoghue from Mayo was at his best of football I've seen him, both going football, going forward, but also on the defensive side of things. I've seen a tweet saying he's, a, you know, he's useless going backwards, but you can't expect a corner, back, corner forward to be making the tackles, but he was very good at was putting himself in front of players and just causing a delay or a change of direction. And, you know, you have to weigh that up against maybe someone like O'Sullivan, who's a hardened cornerback, to try and get the ball off someone. We've done a few done well, both going forward and dropping back. Um, I would have had him up there for player of the week, had that Mayo and Ross Common been a higher quality, but it wasn't. It was a really poor game. Mm, yeah, I was watching bits and pieces of it uh, earlier on today. Oh my God, it was definitely not a game for the ages. I really, I know I, I don't want to obviously have to, don't want to be wearing my Cavan hat here, but I really did think Brian O'Connor for Cavan had a great game of the weekend. My God, he was the driving force, him and Key and Riley. I think we're very, very good for Cavan, but Brian really did force the issue at the weekend. My God, his runs and breaking lines and. He's been in and around the Cavan team the last couple of years, and my God, he deserves a start in Jersey. He has had a fantastic season uh, thus far, and hopefully he has a good run in the All-Ireland campaign as well. Obviously, looking at that team, Sean Patton had a great game at the weekend. A nice moment on off the ball, him giving his 
uh, gloves away to a young fan. Obviously, Sean uh, looking after the youth of uh, Donegal, and then Mick McCarron had, had a very solid game. In fairness, could also have to say that he was he was he was very solid. He stuck to his task. And then, obviously, you know, a half back line of Ryan McHugh, Tom O'Sullivan, and Daryl Will, to be fair, uh, Mr. Kennedy. Um, that would probably be most people's picks for half back line if they're to pick their favorite team at the minute. Yeah, and even, you know, Tom starting in the corner, back position, you know, um, the both those lads in the wings were fantastic at the weekend. Everything that came from Donegal came from penetrating deep runs from the half back line. If you go back and watch the game back, you'll see that it wasn't so much the half forward line midfield whenever they're winning ball, it was the the trust and ability to carry on from half back and forget, you know, that your job is defending. It was almost like trust put into them two lads, get forward. Even if you're beyond the ball, just keep going forward because it creates an overlap in there. I thought both of them were fantastic at the weekend. Yeah, yeah. And then obviously Steve Cohen and Patrick Connor in midfield. And then obviously like a, a half forward line of Aaron Griffin, Rob Frinney and Sean O'Shea. And obviously Sean O'Shea was very good against the old enemy Cork at the weekend. And then, a full forward line of Ryan Orley, Derek Canavan and Ryan O'Donoghue. My God, that would cause you a very lot of headaches if you were to plan against that full forward line any day of the week. Yeah, and Hurley, that's that's as good a game as Hurley's played on a number of years. Like, you know, I thought he was he was great the game the other day. He was always dangerous, he was always on the lookout. Um, I don't think he, he not that he carried Cork, but he was certainly the the pinnacle of their attack. Everything seemed to go through him whenever things were going well for Cork. Mm, yeah, no, he was absolutely fantastic. And I know, so was no real complaints with Darrell Boyle being player of the week, Mr. Kennedy. He had a fantastic game against Derry. He did, he did. Um, I, if anything, you know, it is a team of the week. I'd probably say for Cavan not to have anybody on it, given how far they pushed through, right till the death of the actual oh. game. Oh, team of the week. Oh, Brian O'Connell, we had one. Oh, is it Brian O'Connell? Yeah. Brian O'Connell, yeah. Cornerback? Cornerback, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was devastated. I didn't, I didn't make the cut myself. I don't know. We'll make county someday. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what age? What is? What's the average age of the Masters now? What, what have we got up to? <laughs> oh my God, twenty-seven. You get into twenty-seven these days for having dodgy ankles. Jesus Dodgy Christ. ankles, dodgy knees, dodgy backs. Uh, <laughs> I put down to flogging underage. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's your story, Kevy. What's that uh, saying? Uh, uh, I believe you thousands wouldn't. Great stuff, Miss Kennedy, as per usual. And we will crack right into the action that took place over the weekend on Sunday, the 21st of April, in the Ulster Senior Football Championship quarterfinal. It was Cavan against Throne. It was Cavan 316, Throne 123 in Kingspan Brefty Park after extra time. <sighs> Oh my God, yeah, like coming away from this game, obviously, you know, there's so many talking points as I said on Twitter and obviously like the weather being just incredible and it going to extra time and, you know, what Tyrone winning, winning by what, seven or eight points at half time, you know, for Tyrone to kind of let us back into this game was just beyond belief really and how to give so many chances and so many goal opportunities was just crazy and I don't think if Donegal get a hint of that this weekend I think they could really go to town on them but crazy game really looking back on it um, as I said there's so many probably talk of points and so many ang- angles you can kind of look and I think Brian Dewar probably will be quite concerned maybe how Tyrone played on, from being at it I thought Tyrone were potentially a bit lethargic or a bit you know, not their usual throne running up and down the pitch. It looked a bit, a bit of a flat kind of throne performance to a degree. I know obviously they did get the job done, got the got the win, but and then Cavan really did put in a serious shift, a serious effort. But I just think at the end, just the lack of shooting prowess that we had probably came back to bite us in the backside. But I suppose, Mr. Kennedy, your thoughts on this game? Yeah, just right at the end, there you were even from 45, 50 yards out, you were just hoping Paddy Lynch would have a good rifle at it. You know, and, and just hope some sort of chaos. Right, right to the referee. I think he ended up with the, the ball as a referee through the whistle. And he almost yep. looked and went, Jesus, you know, if I've messed up there. But a great, a, you know, a great game to watch. As a, as a neutral at it, you, at times, the game was over. The game was gone. The game was dead and buried from a cabin perspective. Um, and Tyrone looked in control for an awful lot of that game. And they were in control until they weren't in control. And that black card that um, Hamsey got, you know, that created a reshuffle within the Troon team that fair play to Calvin, they took full advantage of. And they were, I think, apart from one that was fisted over, they were ruthless when everyone in there too. They knew they needed goals and they went for it. You know, they, and he, had there been maybe a point or two in it, they probably would have just fisted over the bar. But they knew they were, as you say, six, seven, eight points behind and they had to go for goals and they paid off whenever they went for that. And, you know, it just shows you again what... 
work have an hour in terms of where they can get to in terms of their players and competing. Yes, Tyrone had, what, six debutants into it, missing a lot of key players. Peter Hart's a massive player for them. But you could tell from early on just how good Matty Donnelly, Matty, um, Matt Donnelly was going to play that day. You know, he, he was fantastic. That block he made was equally as good as uh, Gormley's in the All Ireland final. You know, a big dive onto the foot where it didn't leave. It, didn't leave. it was a cracking dive. It was an example of it. Um, but throughout the game, even McCurry, like as we dink for his point, running onto the ball, dinking up his left foot and shooting with his right. There was so much skill in the game that you probably didn't appreciate it at the time until mm. you started to see on Twitter and, and social media those mm. slow down motions of the actual game, what players were doing, their pivots, being able to take the ball at pace at times. It was yeah, a fantastic but- game. It was class, like, and it's probably only till uh, if, 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 if we do get the chance uh, to watch it back uh, in between the in between the bloody the night feeds and so on and so forth. Like, th- th- what literally just mesmerised me on Monday there, like these players, like they played what eighty plus minutes of football. The sun was beating down. You could see the legs getting tired. Gary Rourke at the end, he'd known to pass the because I genuinely think the Cavan players were completely just out in their feet at that stage. But like them lads had to go to work on the Monday morning where you're looking at the Premier League players, you're looking at the lads who play championship football or whatever, getting your 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 70, 80 grand a week. Like the Cavan throw boys, you know, they could have potentially might have got the Monday off, but my God, you could bet your bottom dollar your day will be back probably on the Tuesday or you know, tomorrow, Wednesday, like getting back to their day jobs and they put in such a shift. I know there, it felt like there was more than nine thousand at that game. It really did. Um I think that's the figure that came in, but geez, it really felt like maybe fifteen, sixteen thousand. But you know, it, it, do, it does go to show, like you know, the, the life that they have to live when the battle is over. And there's a lot to be said about that, but we don't consider. You know, it's almost like, well, live another week, another game. The Premier League do it all. It's the same way in the league that it was, but it's it's not. It's completely different, as you said. Them boys will have to get on the bus. Okay, Tyrone's not that far away, an hour up the road or whatever it might be. But they're sitting there. They probably wait a swimming pool or so after. They. They have to get up the next morning. You, some of them commute, maybe get up at half six, seven o'clock, make their way into work, do a full day's work, and then get out. Because unlike, unlike some counties that are based solely around about football and you're given a, a teaching job because it's you're a footballer and you get the summers off, a lot of them boys will either be working themselves um, in their own jobs, electricians, sparks, up and down ladders all day, or they might be civil servants, or they might be teachers that... They're expected to come in the next day and put in, all right, you're you're not, in some ways being a teacher is probably harder because you're not, if you were on a building site, you'd probably be moving and the blood's flowing and that helps get rid of lactic acid and stuff. If you're a teacher, you're sitting all day, you're teaching a class and this, the, the, the lactic acid builds up in you and stores and the pools, you don't have that much movement and you're waiting until that evening maybe to get to the gym and get on a bike again. But it is a delayed recovery. I think that's the biggest thing. It's a delayed recovery. Almost 100 minutes of football. Yes, Donegal played with such intensity on Saturday night that they'll have the same, slightly less um, concerns. But it, there is something fundamentally wrong with it. It does need a bit of a look at, and a two-week window would be perfect for it. And I think if you got the balance between hurling and football, right, we had a bit like club, you have football one week and hurling next. There's no reason why we can't do it and give the boys a proper recovery time that they need. But, you know... After that game, the data analysts will have been under the job. Jim McGinnis will have been driving home, working out a plan for next week. That, that doesn't stop for them. It's, it continually goes for them. Yeah. Yeah, very good point. And I suppose I seen Brian Dewar after the game, and he was literally like the Tyrone lads, right? No pictures, no autographs. Well, maybe they did sign a few things, or but he was literally get into that dressing room and get your. It does go to show maybe the condensed nature. Obviously, me and you talked about this last week, but the condensed nature of the season and the, the games coming ticking fast, and like obviously Brian Dewar's mindset towards that. Like obviously Donegal this weekend, huge game. Mike Wynn is probably underdogs to a degree, like after maybe after the performance at the weekend, but it does go to show get into the pitch, get the recovery done, and you know. You know, no time for hanging about, I suppose, because my God, it was some battle. Yeah, it was, and do you know what? It, it was more than 100 minutes of football. If, say, if it was wet and windy, the game would have been slow. It would have, even if I had went the extra time, the, the intensity wouldn't have been there, no matter what. It would have been a different type of intensity because, like, a heavy ground pulls on you slightly differently. But see, because it was warm, it, and then boys haven't trained like that all year, you know, unless they've been away to Portugal somewhere, they haven't trained like that all year. And you could see as soon as the extra time started, the cramps were gone. People were yeah. going down because that's it just energy sapping. Even an extra time on a, on a decent day that you know that we're used to, 
you will get five, six, seven minutes out of players. You like, get them to the first, the, the, towards the end of the first half of extra time before they seriously start cramping up. But as soon as that ball was through in the other day, it was bang, the, the, the cramps are going. I think you've seen, was it um, Kilpatrick, Kilpatrick, he, he came out with the ball and he went to give it to, I think it was McCurry, and he went to hand it over to him and he's seen him. Kurt McCurry was actually calling for you. So he says, you can't walk. <laughs> you know, he had given the ball back because he was that tight. Um, went to get it and he says, you can't walk, I can't give it to you. And he'd give it away to the other side. It just shows you what the boys went through because here, they're, they're fit. You know, you'll not get more fitter men in Ireland on them. Like. Mm. <laughs> so, so I was nearly tired coming home. God, like, what to say with the heat. I don't, I don't know what the players were like. Like, it was just, it, it just felt like such an exhausting occasion for them. But, you know, the game itself, Mr. Kenny, I really couldn't like it was we were like a cat nearly with nine lives and I'm, like I was with, I was at the game with a few of my mates and we were just saying at half time, like Jesus Christ, like will we just go back into town? Like we just like because it really just did look like you know it was game over at that point. And we just got we just got that rejuvenation. We got a couple of goals, we got a few obviously lucky scores, and you know, maybe Tyrone will definitely be obviously because don't be kicking themselves obviously because of the win, but like <clears throat> With the match analysis and the video analysis probably this week, they probably will be thinking, Jesus Christ, we will need to show up that defence because the Cavan goals, my God, like, very fortuitous. Yeah, there's also a bit of naivety there in terms of the Lynch, you know, Paddy Lynch. It's easier, you're coming up against Hart. Paddy Comsey is a cracking defender. Cracking, you know, all-star calibre defender. You're putting him in there, and I think that was part of the problem. Had he stayed on the pitch... I don't think Cavan would have come back as much. I think Cavan scored two one while he was off the field. You know that. Now you could see whenever McKinnon came back, he went straight on. You know that Tyrone had obviously planned who was going to drop back should any one of those defenders be black carded or sent off or whatever it might be, and they were straight onto the ball with it. They knew what they were doing. But for Cavan, I just felt in the first half, Paddy Lynch is a marked man. Teams say that's the first thing in me. Cavan say right, who's marking Lynch? Let's work it out that way. Leaving Lynch in the full forward lane, and you've seen it even in the Monaghan game for long periods of it, it almost takes him out of the game because it's so hard to get the ball into him. I'd like to see him, whenever that is happening, come out to a number 11 position and sit there as a, as, as a lone man in half forward because he's quick, he's power, he's strength, he's great hands on him, he's good feet on him. If he can get the ball in there, he can go two directions. He can either go back towards his own goal with the ball and build up his confidence, or he can turn and go forward. Sometimes if you're left in that full forward line, coming out with the ball, you've only one direction to go. And that's either turn around and they call the second players or go back anyway. You know, So I think that if if he had been more involved or been allowed to be more involved in the first half, it may have been a wee bit different for Cavan. But their goals came at the right opportunity for them and it created a lot of finish to the game. I just thought it was a, a, a fantastic game. I thought it was actually better quality in football than uh, Darian Donegal again. I think both teams were really up for it. And as I say, the skill level, the amount of blocking, like you might count to something like four or five blocks in one half of football. Blocking, mm-hmm. if it's a Dan trade in uh, Gaelic football, someone didn't tell the true and Cabin players. Like. Mm. Yeah, Conor Gordon would be very angry to hear that, I suppose. And obviously, like, I did feel. <clears throat> Obviously, Toronto, like going into the game, it was clear to be seen that they probably had the better scoring forwards. Dan Cavan and probably Derek Canavan probably did get his scores way that bit easier. They were kind of cutting through a good bit in the first and second half, make no doubt about it. And that's probably what me, Cavan, probably did struggle to do. Maybe, of course, the goals were coming, but, you know, just free scoring and probably getting through the lines and probably breaking lines to get the points. And I did feel Tyrone probably were better at doing that. And obviously, that, I think Darren McCurry weighed in with, uh, with four points. And obviously, uh, Derek Canavan. Finn, how many points did he nail? Uh, Derek Canavan kicked a uh, seven points, three frees. Like so that is very, very impressive score. And like my God, I was, I was watching. I was basically behind Derek Canavan. I think was it for the second half? Was it with Tyrone was shooting into uh, to the, the the town goal for the second half? Dar's movement. He's so elusive. He's so quick, and like he's, he just looks like a, like a complete nightmare to mark. And it's an inch. You know, some of the evening seen him in the Sigersons in the wet. The windy nights it probably wouldn't suit him. He was taking an inch more out of his play. That's all he needed to get a shot off. Some players wouldn't take that shot on because a player's breathing down their neck or they're slow in releasing the ball from their hand to the foot to go over. But Dara has that much confidence on his own ability right now. It's great to see him coming through because he's been talked about for a long time in throwing football. Last year, he had a good year without being brilliant. But this year, he's really stepped up and he knows himself that he is the... He's the man that has to play well in order for Tyrone to play well. Hmm. 
Mm. And yeah, their their scores did come easier, but I think that comes down to a wee bit of confidence as well. Um, how Tyrone were able to get in a wee bit closer to the goal, they weren't as wide as Cavan. And you know, there's a trend already evolving with Gaelic football that the width is almost out of the game. Good teams mm. know it's not about running the ball down the channels. That that game's dead. You know, teams know now that it's about trying to keep the pitch narrow on one side and using only two thirds of the width at any time. Um, that's where your overload's coming from. If a team's going from one side line, you've seen they get made against Dublin, uh, one side line across the pivot and out to the other side line, that suits a defensive team all day. There's been an, an, an evolution of football and the top teams know that. Yeah, like I think that's Calvin, what Calvin were doing and we're kind of running down, <clears throat> obviously blind alleyways were kind of going down to like the left left flanks and then the right flanks and we've done that at the very end I think poor Gary O'Rourke getting up the field in fairness to me he, he was really putting you know the, the shoulders as wheel at the very end and he was kind of going in but he was probably caught and then Cavan were kind of doing that and as you say you kind of really do need to kind of go through that middle centre if you're going to have any joy because you know running down to the current flag like that's not going to help your case unless you have just a Jeremy Connolly type figure who can just spin ball from anywhere yeah that, that game, that game's two or three years old now. You know, that game yeah. is two or three years old. Um, and you'll see defenders, good defenders will, if someone's out on the sideline, they'll stand 15 yards off them into that sort of central school uh, where they're, they're shooting from. No players, very few players these days can score from 45 yards out on the left-hand side. You know, that's, or the right-hand side, wherever it might be, that those days are no longer there because players from certain teams don't have the confidence to shoot I don't have the ability to shoot from that distance as well. But rather, if, if you think about it, if you where the black spot is, the 45-yard line from the black spot, right out in the middle is 45 yards. Every step you take is getting further away from goal. So even if you walked along that 45, five yards that way, you're now 50 yards away from the black spot. Five yards that way, you're now 60 yards away. You, know, you keep on adding that. I don't, I don't know what it is, but if you imagine the, the 45 flag, if you were to hit a shot from there, you're probably talking in cuts of 65 yards away from the actual scoring zone or the, mm. the, the post, which ridiculous only Rory Began and Al Morgan players like that can hit those. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think that probably was the crux at the end. But I it was it, Philly McMahon. I was chatting I was chatting to Philly McMahon that says to him about it. Um the speed actually at half time where done where Tyrone went in well ahead. The average phase of play that ended in a score from Tyrone was 50 seconds long. Yeah, the average eight, the average phase of play that ended in a score for Cavan was um, eighty seconds long, one minute and twenty seconds. So mm. that was the difference. And thirty seconds it might seem like a long time, it but is, that though. allows players to get back. Yeah, numbers there, and all of a sudden, that's your credit. Yeah, no, that's a very, very good point, and I did notice that with Tyrone. Like, the, the, my God, like when they did get the scores, I just you just seen these, you seen the likes of Matty Donnelly kind of coming from deep, was running through. Like, we, like it was really just kind of like a knife through butter. Like you seen Derek Canavan just kind of, kind of just slink it through. Obviously, I know Darren McCurry hit a few wise, but just kind of running through. Maybe that's probably Cavan's defense. Maybe that kind of might have to short up. But I did really find it. It just took it. It, it, it thrown at the ease to a degree. Like they really did kind of just, just kind of cut through very easily at times. Well, that's why I was saying there just about uh, Ram down here. I don't know who it was. Just seeing it on Twitter saying, you know, he's brilliant going forward, but going back his tackling is terrible. Mm. It's not just about tackling. You know, tackling is mm. one element of it. Tackling is about winning the ball. But if what O'Donoghue was very good at doing was dropping in to that half, sort of just before the half back line and delaying the Ross Common player and forcing him to go back, that's another five seconds. Someone else does that as 10 seconds. That mm. allows your other half forwards, your midfield or your half backs to drop down and get into that shape where they're like, no one, no one's shooting from in here. That's what that does. You know, if you were marked by players in terms of their performance, if someone delays a player and forces them to go back, he didn't dispossess them, but it's it's a point. It's, it's a one mark. That's a good move for you to do. Mm. The longer the other team have the ball, if you're in the lead, the longer the other team have the ball, the better for you because they're not scoring from that. Different if they had a shot clock whereby they maybe see Jim McGuinness, they have a shot clock whereby every shot has to be hit within a minute. Yeah. Even if it goes wide or dead, they're getting shots off. If you get 30 shots off the game and you get 50% conversion on it, you win football matches. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I suppose that's, that's the next evolution. A lot of teams haven't clicked on that. That's next year, John. You'll see that next year. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope so from Cavan and the things. My God, we just need to unearth a few forwards to give Paddy a hand. Uh, where do you feel maybe Cavan came up short an extra time, Kevy? I just think that whenever it came the extra time, that the legs were gone. 
there was that phase towards the Emmer by even with uh, Groy going up. You knew he didn't want the ball. There's plenty of opportunity for him to get the ball, but Tyrone weren't overly fussed on. You know, they didn't try and push out and press on to him. I think maybe just a bit more experience coming off the bench towards that um, would have been good, especially that driving going forward part, because Tyrone done really well. Their they're, they're key marks, I mean, Canavan had come off, Mercury had come off, you know, there were men who were landing, but they were replaced with good runners too, good young players coming through. And I think that was what got them over the line in the end, just that wee bit more depth and talent. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so. And obviously, from the Tyrone and the things like, throughout the game, Kevin, it's, it's probably the elephant in the room conceding three goals. And obviously, you know, Calvin scoring three goals, how you don't get over the line. It, it's crazy stuff, really, when you look back and just the crazy nature of the game goes to show. But, you know, Tyrone going forward this weekend against Donegal, obviously, the former Bushy Gallon at the minute, the former Paddy McBurdy, like that defence will need to be very vigilant this weekend. And it cannot do what they've done against Calvin. No, but it's about learning from that too. You know, if that proves a vulnerability to them, whereby, I mean, remember the the goals came at a time whenever there was a bit of chaos in terms of them getting reset and resettled. Had say had Padraig Campy still been on the pitch, I don't think they would have been goals because everything was almost sheared up by then. But I do think that if if do her recognizes, look, it might take us two or three. We're more vulnerable if this happens then you might see them actually dropping an additional player back in and trying to slow the game down just for, while that black card's in, just for two or three minutes to get the players set up to see where they're going on. You know, and, and I mean, Morgan Palm, Morgan went up to try and flick one away um, and he flicked it down into the path of a, a Calvin player and, and that was that was it. That was the writing on the wall for it. But I don't think, I wouldn't be overly fussed about it if they can just... Take the approach or by we're vulnerable. We know we're vulnerable at this point. If we get a black card anywhere in that full back line, half back line the next day, we need to slow this game down and drop as many people behind into that square so that if we give away three points, it's not the end of the world. Three points in 10 minutes down a man isn't the end of the world. Two, two, one down a man is massive. That's seven points to be given away. That's where the swing came. Just that wee bit of chaos. Mm, yeah, I suppose obviously I thought Keane Madden he started really, really well, but I think Keane maybe went out of the game a good bit and obviously his brother Tieran and uh, came on as well. But I thought this right Keane is going to be this, you know, the link for Paddy Lynch and obviously Paddy was well well marked and well marshaled this time, you know, unlike the morning game. So I suppose maybe that's probably maybe where Calvin's probably problem was, other than Paddy Lynch. I know Paddy probably won was maybe quieter days to a degree. That's probably that's Probably where the problem was, like Darren McCurry up the under the field, Derek Hanneman, that's where she was where Cavan just didn't have that. It did, but that probably comes down to a wee bit of coaching as well. You know, how many, if you went back and looked throughout the league, how many players outside of Paddy Lynch actually took shots? Not even saying about scores, but actually took shots. You could see um, during the game those players who were very confident. I thought in the Cavan team in particular, of solo with the left and pass him to the right. You know, there were good dual, there's good players in that team here who can use both feet. But whenever it came to shooting, they were very hesitant in doing yeah, so. And that yeah. might be a case of playing those percentage calls. But as I said again, the game's evolved. The game is no longer about percentage shots. The game is about mm. shoot, shoot on site, and let's try and shoot often. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because I think it probably cost at the end. I suppose that kind of, you know, t- taking their time and with the, we didn't have the time. Definitely at the end, obviously, as you say, Paddy Lynch was the last man of the ball. Surely there was some man in some position to kind of maybe get the, get it to a draw, but unfortunately that did not happen. And Calvin fans left disappointed. Encouraged though, because one thing I would say is I just feel it was a very competitive Calvin performance. It was a very workmanlike performance. Never say die attitude. Maybe something we potentially lacked in the last couple of years. Obviously, you know, the 2020 success, maybe that spoke for, spoke for itself, but it, it did feel like there's a real hunger and desire there. And I just think in fairness to Ray and his, um, his uh, small backroom team, he will have this, <laughs> he will have this, <laughs> he will have this team competitive. Yeah, Jockey Stump Brent on his first year said, you know, great, great run the league. So it died off a year back come the end of the league, came out after the Monaghan game and says, look, we knew we were out of contention for promotion. So we eased off a wee bit, had a good game against Monaghan and, and done really, really well against her own. His next job will try to be to get more players from somewhere into that. But yeah, I just, I, you know, just to summarise it, John, I just thought the game was a brilliant spectacle of football. And we are an amateur sport. Jim Gavin's aim is to create the most entertaining amateur sport in the world. Anyone watching that game on Sunday, 
couldn't have seen anything different. You know, I was delayed to get the, the two extra time and it just felt like a really good place to be on a Sunday. It was. It was. My God, it, the stones spit in the stones. And it, it, was, it was kind of quick as the weather during the week here. It, was, it just came down, showers, miserable rain, and then you had, what, 20-odd degrees of sunshine. So, in fairness, it was a lovely day to get it. Hard luck to Cavan on the go to the All-Ireland qualifiers and Tyrone go to an Ulster semi-final this weekend against Dune and all. Donegal, and I suppose on Saturday, Kevy, in the Ulster Senior Football Championship quarterfinal, you had Der- uh, Derry against Donegal. It was Derry, 17 points. Donegal 4-11 in Celtic Park. Um, Oren Lynch, you may start staying on your goal. I don't know. I don't know. I, look, I think that... Um, I remember going down to watch a Sigerson's game a few years ago, two years ago, and it was standing beside uh, Russell and he was telling me who the keeper was. And Oren, he conceded, I think it was five goals that night against UCD. And I went, Jesus, there's something dodgy going on there. You know, I didn't know who he was at the time. But then he came out last year, a good year for a good bit last year. Good Ulster final coming out. I think he scored a point in that Ulster final from play. Um, one that bounced over, it sort of caught Rafferty off. It bounced and just in front of Rafferty and ended with the bar. But I don't think it, it's the be-all and end-all. I don't think he, he was to blame for maybe one of the goals where he should have got the finger out and got back a lot quicker. But... It was a team effort and, you know, whenever you look back at the particular goals, you see that he was being, I mean, we're, we, he was being used as a scapegoat in many ways. He was being used as a scapegoat in many ways because even if Oren had been in net out of th- those three goals that he was caught out with, at least two of them would have been a goal anyway. At least two of them would have been a goal. Unless he pulled off a wonder save. But, their numbers and it was six six against two in Donegal's favour and six against three in Donegal's favour both times. Yeah. The yeah. runners from half back weren't coming. The runners from the half forward line weren't coming back in midfield. As soon as they lost the ball, there was no interest in Derry coming back. And you've seen the one again, I'm not blaming Chrissy McCaig. I don't think he can. I heard Darno Sullivan coming out and saying, you know, you've got to give him a lynching. Chrissy McCaig's job was pick up Gallon. Gallon didn't score from play. Chrissy McCaig done his job in that way. But a wee bit of cuteness. We talked about it not so long ago, actually, John, on this podcast. Bright says that, you know, with a sweeper keeper, it's not about that keeper having to make a run from the 45 back if they're under pressure. There's people in there. So it's a case of drop you back and I'll pick up your man. And that is both men covering maybe 20, 20 yards, 22 and a half yards, you know, if it's somewhere in the middle of it. So if you're the, if you're the boy who's received the ball, um, from a Donegal perspective, you look up, you see McKay coming off and you see Lynch going back. You have two things to think about. It's McKay can get back there before I can shoot or I have to make sure this is a pinpoint brilliant pass to Gallon. Otherwise, it's not going anywhere. Yeah. Better communication, yeah. that wouldn't have been an issue. But I think mm. that, you know, they are, I thought Cora Staunton, Cora Staunton and uh, Jackie Hardy, I thought there were comments on the Sunday game. I've seen a clip of it and I went on and watched it. I thought it was horrendous comments. You know, I didn't like that they, he was being made out. The picture of him put up there, you know, stay in your nets. He's back to back Ulster Championships. You know, mm. it's a lot more than what some of those folks who are commentating actually have mm. as well, you know. Um, and mm. I think Andy McGinley showed his class. Andy McGinley showed why he is in the Normally same does. Category. Normally does, yeah. Same category as Eamon Fitzmaurice for me, you know, he's able to mm. see the game and see what's going on around him. He'll look at a game mm. and say, actually, that's that looks like a problem, but what it actually is the problem. And mm. I just I just thought the commentary and the online onslaught of him on Saturday night was on call for. Yeah. Three best pundits in the game. Kevin Kennedy, Eamon Fitzmaurice, and Enda McGinley. I'll have I'll have no I'll I'll have no <laughs> I, I, I think so too, John, but it's only me and you think that. <laughs> <laughs> I think my mum might think it as well, but she doesn't even follow the game. She does she not watch us? Does your own? Does your go on, Kevin? You you do what you want there. If you think you're that good, son, you know, keep believing. But does she not watch the podcast? No. No, she doesn't even know to do a podcast. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ. That, 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 that has to change. I that has to know what a podcast is. She's more interested in reading to see who's dead in the Irish news. That has to change. That has to change. But I suppose at, at that point, in terms of the, the the onslaught on Twitter, the onslaught on Instagram, the onslaught probably in WhatsApp group chats, so on and so forth. And my point earlier on, these players have to go to work in the Monday morning, have to go to work Tuesday, whatever you're having yourself. Like I think 
you know, a lot of people, and it's probably, as you say, probably lazy analysis or Lynch at fault for this. And I think you made a very good point. It could have been down to like the man. It's probably the more of a managerial call. Like surely Mickey Hart had to be saying after even the second time he's lobbed, maybe even after the first time he was lobbed, stay on that effing line. Yeah, look, there's no doubt about it that the, there could have been better calls made either between the management or between the players. Because remember, we're not dealing with inexperienced players here. That Derry team have just won the Division 1 title um, a couple of weeks ago in Croke Park against the best team in Ireland last year in Dublin. And they're obviously smart, they're cute. But what you what you have to think about is how were they measuring the impact of that? You know, we know, like, we have Joe and stuff. You know, Joe's, Joe's uh, very... Forthright in his comments of I hate it, give him back, it does my head. And you know, he's very very forthright and he knows what he wants. And I heard someone else saying, and it was Kevin McStay actually saying, how do you actually measure the impact that the risk versus reward sort of thing goes on? It's very easy to measure. And I don't believe that a keeper going out, unless you're Nell Morgan, unless you're Rory Began, who can jump, can get up, and they're physically fit as well, Rafferty. Shane Rand maybe as well there's very few players in the game who can actually do that I mean let's face it Orrin, Orrin Lynch wouldn't be in the best of shapes to play outfield he gets away with playing outfield simply because a lot of teams won't go near him they know he's probably limited on his risk but he does have good feet on him he's picked out some wonderful passes this year over the top to create an extra man and if you were to sit down and go through every game this year you even after Saturday night if you were put a point against every positive move forward and a uh, even the goals, say you were to take three points off him for them goals conceded, you would still say that overall this season he's well into the black. You know, he mm-hmm. that risk reward has worked for him because I haven't conceded goals like that apart from, well, he did run past, um, you get ball to Brian Rogers and he run on past him down in Tralee that night. Probably should have been a foul, but there's there's four goals they've conceded that this year by doing so. But I don't think they were hugely interested in Saturday night after they sort of knew the game was over. So they mm-hmm. just continue to do what they do. I can't see them getting rid of it, but I can see they can improve it. And I believe that the improvement part comes around about communication. Go you out there and stand, but see if that ball's turned over. Uh, Chris McKeague, if you're the last man, you have to be ready to drop back onto the lane. And that's how it works. I see it in club games all the time. Mm-hmm. Keeper puts his head down, he runs back, and there's a, he actually runs past two or three of his own men to get back onto the lane. You're like, why do you not just call someone? Mm-hmm. Tax him even. You have plenty of time to tax him. Go back there, stand on the lane for me. You know, it's a big thing where good teams they know how to communicate well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, common sense. Uh, uh, I suppose applies as well. I suppose obviously, how will they, will this affect Derry in terms of you know go go going down the track? Obviously, getting knocked out of those championship. Like, can you feel maybe this might benefit them with a bit of a break, and then the, the more than likely will get a run of games and you know propel them potentially to an All Ireland semi, All Ireland final. Like, can you see this result on Saturday uh, affecting the Derry senior footballers and Mickey Hart? No, and the only way it can is because they're no longer they're in this, they're being seated against a team who w- wins their provincial final. You know, who have Kerry go on to win um, Munster, which in all likelihood will happen if um, Dublin go on to win their all their Leinster title, which in all likelihood will happen as well. There's a good chance that I'm not sure about that one. <laughs> <laughs> there's a good chance that Derry will be drawn against one of them, ones. and going to Tralee, um, go to Killarney, or going to uh, Dublin. In May, whenever the sun's splitting the trees, it's different than going in January whenever it's pissing down rain. Mm. You know, so it's, it's a hard, like, you'll bet your backside that Kerry won't, let's face it, Kerry won't think too much of, of winning the Munster Championship. They will hate to lose it, but they won't think too much winning it. But what they benefit from is that first match in a group stage is a home fixture, which is a big, big, um, a big incentive for them. Mm. Yeah, but look, look at the, what, what was the score at the end of the game? The Derry Donegal game. Derry Donegal game. Derry Donegal game was. Let me see here. Now it was Derry seventeen points, Donegal four eleven. Yeah, who who scored the most scores? Uh, Derry seventeen points in fairness. Yeah, seventeen points wins your football matches. Cut out those stupid mistakes, the goals. And they were comfortably clear. And I don't mean that. Obviously, you can't get rid of a goals. But I mean, we talked about the RBA Cab McKernan. From a coaching perspective, from a performance perspective, are they going to concede four goals they got again? 
No, they're not. But like, but like in like I, I can't like say like when you watch that game back, like surely be to Jesus after the second or third goal. Like I, I don't understand. Like what are like what are horse like a, probably the best, probably two best managers we've seen of all time, alongside Jim Jim Gavin. Um, but like I just don't understand what like where is the message coming? Like, like after getting shipped two or three times, what's that saying, Kevy? You know, fool me once, you know, you're the fool. Fool me twice, I'm the fool. Like surely there has to be. We did say about this, but like that, that has to be communicated. Yeah, it does. I I don't I don't I'd be. Hasn't to say they didn't care about the game. You know, Mickey Hart made early changes. That tells me that unless those players were injured, that the early changes were we had to change something up here to contribute to the game that goes on. But there's no mistake in where Derry's aims are this year. They declared it from the very, very start. You go back to the BBC, Thomas, your your mate in the block, and go back to his um podcast with Connor Gloss. What's Mickey Hart's aim? Is all Ireland. Did Mickey Hart win an All Ireland whenever with Tyrone in the same year they won Ulster? Oh yes. no, no. I th- I think all three of them went through the back door whenever they won. Oh five, oh five. Uh, oh god, oh five. I think they went through the back door. Yeah, you're right. Actually, yeah, it probably was the plan of his. Yeah. No, I'm not saying that they didn't go out to win that game, but they had bigger face to fry, and maybe just at that ten or like you know. The writing's on the wall here. We'll be disappointed if we... They didn't go out to lose the game, but at the same time, they'll take the lessons from it and they'll not concede four goals they got again. Crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. So going forward, if, if a team doesn't want to win a game football in the GA these days, don't have a keeper in nets. <laughs> well, that's always a good... Don't be starting your full-back line either. But I think <laughs> that, that, that doesn't take away from Donny Gall. You know, I'm very conscious of saying that. It doesn't take away from Donny Gall. Donny Gall were fantastic on the night. Their intensity that they brought into it, you know, the energy is the word. I don't know what that means, but the intensity in terms of their running... Transition. Yeah. They're, they're, how they went about the game of bringing a game plan, as I said there, that it was... And they've done it throughout the year. It shoot and shoot often and take risks. You know, I think that was... They scored again, a goal like that against Fermanagh. Their half-back lanes of bombing forward, whereas you actually seen it for the... The last goal where Lynch went up. Now, Lynch was... He was caught out in terms of... Derry had double-marked a player out on Patton's left-hand side. Their midfielder and half-back. They double-marked a player out there. There was a Donegal midfield was just lined up in front of Lynch. He had to go for that ball. He was the only one there. He had to go for it. It didn't work out that way from. But see if you watch the clip back. See in the right hand side, it might be Doherty. Ethan Doherty's coming back and the ball's kicked and he makes a sort of cut in. He's, he's laying the line of his man from the Donegal 45 into the Derry 45 and then sort of comes across to wait on that breaking ball coming down to be an option. If Derry win it, he gets it and he's away. But I think it was actually Ryan McHugh. Ram Q's already 10 yards in front of him into the dairy half. Doesn't matter what's going on. He's legs, he's there, he's a number over the top of him. And there was he wasn't the only one to do it. There was two and three of them done it. And they took a risk of doing that. They went, let's go. And that's why they had six against three and six against two and both them. Mm-hmm. Now, whenever you slow it down and watch it again, you'll see even Connor Glass, the half whenever Derry were caught out in midfield, they stopped. They they did stop. They didn't try and chase back, or they did, they were half-hearted about jogging back. And it's not to be critical of them, you know, go back and watch a clip and you'll see it. They go into second gear, whereas Donegal are in sixth gear. Mm. Yeah. Oh, it's very interesting, Kevy. Can Donegal win the Anglo Celt Cup? Yes, they can. But it will be as a result of Armagh not getting their set up and their tactics right. Or the penalties. Oh, gross the penalties, I. Darma should just walk off then. I think that, you know, I, I heard Aidan Falker actually talk about it the other day, where he says it about, you know, the high press and why they don't do it so often. It's because, you know, if you're chasing, chasing, you're always tired or you get tired. And that, that to me is like alarm bells going off. Like, alarm bells going off. If you're doing a high press and it's effective, the other team should be getting tired, not you. Falker's like a mini McGinney, isn't he? Well, he's he's probably a better footballer than what McKinney was. I love Ian Faulkner as a footballer. I think he's a cracking footballer. Mm, in terms yeah, of you know, McKinney that, was obviously a powerhouse, big, yeah. strong, physical, imposing lad. Like to kick a ball from across the field, the way Joe Cairn had them playing. But Faulkner's a classy footballer. 
Yeah, yeah, it kind of has that aura about him, has to be said. Yeah, so Donegal probably favourites at this minute in time, so we will wait and see. Mr Kennedy, any other thoughts on Saturday night? Are happy enough? No, that game just uh, thought the game was a good game to be watching. Um, entertaining game as well. Yep, brilliant stuff, brilliant stuff. Happy days, Mr Kennedy. We will move on to Munster Senior Football Championship semi-final action on Saturday. It was Waterford 1-9, Clare 2-20 in Farfield. The Waterford, Waterford dream is over, unfortunately, obviously beating to Bird last year, but coming up against a fairly formidable Clare team. And Clare go on to the Munster final now in a few weeks' time. And then you had Kerry against Cork in Fitzgerald Stadium, obviously, this rivalry, probably a thing of the past. Hopefully we can get it back, but it wasn't a bad game on Saturday. Cork winning at half time, but couldn't get the job done. Kerry, 18 points. It was Cork, 1-12. Very, very, very spirited Cork form performance, that to be said. But obviously, probably as expected, Mr. Kennedy, Kerry pulled away and got the job done. Yeah, an entertaining game, you know. Um, I think the way Cork started and they got their goal early as well made any sort of onlooker, at least a partly excited that Kerry had to chase the game. But, I mean, I don't think Kerry would have been getting at half-time panicking or worried. They just needed to make a few wee tweaks, and that was Emmons back in. And I think it was at um, Andrew McGinley, I think it was just then, it's those boys getting the rust off. And that's essentially what it was. Again, 18 points in a game of football against good calibre opposition since the sort of split in the league. Cork have come back, and I think they won all that, the last three of their games, you know, without much fuss. Um, so the Cork at the start of the league and start, the Cork at the finish of the league were two different animals. And for Kerry to come out and score not 18, whenever they probably weren't having their best day, again shows that those boys are planning for later on down the lane. The, the, the same as Derry, you know, 17 points to game of football, some shooting, some scoring. Like, you know, it's mm-hmm. not that the performance was bad, but obviously there's room for improvement on it all. Mm, so what you're saying is David Clifford is preparing for uh, later down the track, Mr. Kennedy? Everybody is. I think it. I was a wee bit surprised in some of the team selection. Like Gavin White starting to stand at half back. I was a wee bit surprised about. But the way Kerry would have approached that game was they would have knew who core players were and who was going to pick up what. And they would have went through a, a system of, are you fit? Are you playing well? I know you're the man for this job. And you know, they, they would have identified people in that back lane particularly to pick up. Um, I think it was, it was, you know, it was a good run out. And you've seen others forwards and carry getting involved in the play as well. I think Dar Dar Morning had a, a quiet enough game, but um, he he's getting he has got chances in there through the years. Obviously, him and uh, Roach is, is is competing for that corner forward spot, and you have Paul Ganey coming back as well. Now, I would say that going into the monster final, they may change it up a wee bit again. They may change it up a wee bit slightly to, to play clear, knowing that. The week after or two weeks down the lane, they have a clash with um, potentially a dairy now, you know, which makes it tougher. You know, it does make it tougher. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And then we'll move on to where are we there now? Yes, um, Connex Senior Football Championship semi final action. It was Sligo 14 points, Galway 113. Sligo so, so close. I felt sorry for Tony McAdee after the game. He was so close in this particular game. Coming up short, Galway a bit of class at the end. Uh, this game actually was on live on RTE player, so me and you were giving out about that game, or the Mayo vs. Common game, I think that was an RTE player even, but um, in the end, but uh, Tony McAtee, he was just very disappointed after, the, it was could have been a giant killer, Gall was a bit of class, but the big takeaway probably from this game is Galway probably in a spot of bother going forward, Mr Kennedy. Yeah, they, they definitely underperformed, they definitely underperformed on the day, but also Sligo played with great credit. Sligo played with Sligo overperformed and Galway underperformed and the, the opportunity wasn't missed but they just failed to get over the lane on I thought McEntee's comments after there were I thought there were there were nice comments there were beautiful comments and saying you know we've lost today but wasn't it a great day you know um he knows what he's working with down in there the project is starting to come to fruition, you know, those boys obviously in Sligo believe that they can slay a dragon one day. You know, they can topple a, a Ross Common or a Mayo or a Galway, um, in a not too distant future. But I think that from a Galway perspective, Shane Walsh obviously back in there, maybe they thought it's only Sligo, you know, maybe they were thinking that way as well. Um, probably a wee bit of the the carry get the rustiness off in there, but 
they probably had a wee bit more rust than Kerry had on them and it left them a bit too close for comfort. But you hope that the come the, the final against uh, Mayo, there'll be a different kettle of fish, that they'll be more, they've got that bad bad game out of the way, they've got the win. I wouldn't say it's it's over for them. I don't think Mayo are any great chicks and I think a goal they still could win Colin. Mm. Yeah, I think Shane Walsh was obviously distracted after your harsh comments towards him there last week. Unbelievable. <laughs> me? Never said a harsh <laughs> thing in my life. <laughs> until yesterday, or until probably a couple of hours ago. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that's probably where we could draw the line with that game. Uh, Galway will badly need to prove for that Colin final, make no doubt about it. And Mayo probably will need to as well. Sunday, Mr. Kennedy, it was Connick Senior Football Championship same final action. It was Roscommon against Mayo. Roscommon, 13 points. Mayo... 115 in Dr. Hyde Park. In fairness, on off the ball, Davy Burke was in very, very good form, wasn't given out, wasn't throwing any toys out of the pram, and very positive about the future. He thinks this was common team can really climb trees and go up the ladders. Not too sure about that, in fairness, but good win for me. Oh, Kevin McStay was very happy after a box tick job done. Yeah. yeah, I think there's quality letters to it that Ross Common team. I think that, you know, um, McCarl had a good game for his first game all, all year. Missing him, obviously, a great amount throughout the league. Um, you know, and I, I think he showed his class there on Sunday. He's He was a lot stronger on the ball than what he was last year. Maybe that Romus and Braids this year has done the world of good. But I don't know how Ross Common went into that change room at half time, not five or six points up. The opportunities were there for him. Final... The handling errors by them was atrocious. You know, the last, get into a shooting zone and dropping the ball or leaving the ball behind you, it was just mistake after mistake from them. And there's not much Davy Burke can do in that. You know, if boys aren't holding on to the ball, their their foundation skills, you know, you can't do anything about that onto it. But again, good in the half time, they were well in. They were there with the shoot. Everything was going as well as can be. They kept uh, got Mayo relatively quiet take the O'Shea goal out of it, and Mayo weren't doing anything great shakes apart from Rano Donaghy, Paul Nemmons through the game. They're, they're key players who have been in the league, didn't do an awful lot. So come half time, I watched it, and it, I had pause on, took myself away for a while, and then came back and watched it again. I thought the game was a horrible game to watch. I thought it was boring as hell. It was, a, it was, a, it was just a, a shit game of football to watch. But watching it back in the second half, I got through and watched the second half, and again, Ross Common didn't come out at half time. Far too lax. It wasn't the Mayo did do better in the second half. They obviously scored a lot more. But Ross Common just didn't lay a glove on them. We've seen it against Tyrone. We've seen it in the league against Galway. We've seen it different opportunities through the league whereby they put in a good shift and then it falls apart. We've seen it against Mayo in the league as well. They put in a good shift and then it fall apart. They won so much of the Mayo long ball in the first half. You thought Berlin that they're up for it today. But it got away from them, and um, whenever Mayo started to put the, the, the pressure onto him, they never got back into it. But I think I'd be, just on the, the Connacht side of things, I'd be very, very worried about where Connacht football is. I think so too, yeah. Very, I, as I said to you there, football's moved on. Football is shoot and shoot often. Mm. Even in the Derry and Donegal game, I counted 38 scores. Now, that's not wades and, you know, drop shorts or anything. That's 38 scores. And the... Normal time of the Cavan and Tyrone game, 38 scores. Mm. And then I think it was somewhere in the region of 24, maybe 25 in the Galway game and mm. 28 in the Mayo game. Mm. That That's a stark difference. Even in the Kerry game, it was up to maybe, I think it was 32 in the Kerry game. But you think about Connacht and you think about Ulster and where they are, they're at in terms of their scoring. You have to be able to shoot more. Some of the, the, the teams that are winning now are looking like a hurling team, for God's sake. The scores yeah, that we're getting yeah. to football at the minute is ridiculous. Yeah, I called and Mr. Kenny long made last because Christ, there was lots of games were very, very low score. But that is a very good point regarding Connacht, like Galway. Probably everyone, look, don't get me wrong, fair play to Sligo really putting up to them. And obviously, it was a great Sligo performance, and they were so damn close and could have got the job done. And maybe the, the, I wouldn't say the gap's closed, but like a giant killing probably hopefully will happen very, very soon. But I just think it from the Galway and Mayo when the things and you probably have been. You know, going on about Gal- sorry, Mayo all year, there definitely would be need for concern there. And I think. <clears throat> In my own book, I think Galway and Mayo are in a nice stretch away from going up the steps off the Hogan stand in July. Yeah, massive, massive steps away. The only thing I'll keep Mayo into it is it's Mayo. 
you know, they're, they're the, they're have been there and we rate them off for years and years to come and they'll always be hanging about. They don't play the type of football that's going to win you in all Ireland, but they're a very hard team to beat. And look at. Yeah. Look okay, even if you see Aidan O'Shea had a good game. You know, you can see, I think Aidan O'Shea in a full forward line is a handful and he does do well. But I think that whenever he comes out around about the middle, He's, he's lost at times. He's a big lump of a lad. And the only reason why he's out in there is because he's a big lump of a lad. But if you can keep him and Ronald Donoghue inside, it'd be like having to... <laughs> maybe it, I'm going to say this, but the, the Division 3 standard, um, you'd be like having Gooch and Big Donaghy in there. You know, that's the sort of yeah. type of... They're obviously not up at that calibre either of them. Both brilliant players in themselves, but just not up to that level. Um, mm. But that sort of type of football... And you know, we talked about chaos. Big, high, massive ball going in there. Drops in the square. He flexes it on one way and Donaghy gets used to it. You never know what happens. But mm. yeah, they're a long way off it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think both teams are a nice big stretch. Now, it has to be said, I suppose, Miss Kennedy, we will move on to this weekend's action. On Saturday, the 27th of April, in the Ulster Senior Football Championship semi-final, you've down against Armagh in Clonus. And of course, the game is a quarter past five and the game will be live on GA Go. Um, surely BBC will be showing that. Yeah, the BBC are showing it as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, right, okay, we'll, we'll 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 have to get looked into that big game, of course, this weekend, obviously, under down under the, the, um, the stewardship of the great Conor Laffley, and I think that project may be just another year or so, and then we might see the fruits of his labour properly coming up against a very informed Armagh team, disposed, really, for man of the last day out, probably Armagh going in as favourites, but, you know, down could really give him run for the money this weekend, we'll wait and see. Yeah, I think it almost suits down to be in as underdogs. No hoppers, haven't got a chance. Um, they then can step it up. And it depends on what players they can get back into it as well. They they down are a good team. They just haven't performed the last two days. The team that I watched in the second half in Currigan Park this year was fantastic. They were fantastic. And the first half, they were dangerous, but never converted. But in the second half, they were fantastic in, in what was going on. And had they closed the gap on Armagh, no, I don't think they have. It was 10 points last year and I could see it being somewhere in the reason of 10 points again this year. But at the same time, don't be surprised if Arma. Don't be surprised if Arma just stomped their toe along the way. You know, if, if Arma just put in a half, three-quarter performance, it'll get them over the line, I feel. But down are a team that is coming. They just haven't had two good days the last two days. They haven't done themselves justice. Mm. Mm. I think both teams have progressed in last year. I think Down have got better than what they were last year, but I equally think in equal measures, Armagh have got better, have more um, talent in their team than what they did last year as well. They're certainly getting used to that more. And I think that the, the 10 point gap will be a good marker to say where they're sitting at. Mm. Mm, yeah, it'll be very interesting. Obviously, after you know, Armagh definitely were not tested the last day against Herman and obviously I'm presumed they have been playing challenge matches and then obviously the league final against Donegal did not go to plan. So I suppose the preparation going into the game probably hasn't been great, but I just think that probably won't matter a jot this weekend. Will go in his favourites. Um obviously I think Armagh will be looking for a big performance from the main men once again. But yeah, I think severe well, I wouldn't say severe favourites, but definitely going in is probably oh, yeah, be... severe. Yeah. It'll be heavy favourites, you know, it'll be one to eight, one to nine on, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think so. I think so. That game this weekend and then the big one on Sunday in the Ultra Senior Football Championship semi-final. You've, oh, could have been Calvin, but it's not. Donegal against Tyrone in Celtic Park at 2pm. Of course, the game will be live on the BBC. Big, big game this weekend. As I said earlier on, Mr. Kennedy, you know, their to, to, to own defence will really need to be top of the pops this weekend. Uh, Donegal are coming in hot and fe- hot and heavy. They are doing very, very well, has to be said at the minute. It's a huge game. It's a really big, big game. Uh, you've obviously Brian Dewar against Jim McGuinness once again. So looking looking forward to this one this weekend. Yeah, I think it'll be it will be a good game. Don't I don't expect it to be as good as either game was over the weekend there, but I think that's probably because both teams will try and conserve as much energy as they can until sort of the the second half, at least, um, I think that they'll, they'll it'll be a very conservative approach to the start of the game, and it'll be a slow build up to the game. But that a spark will come at some stage. I would be worried for Tyrone simply because they have had to. Now, it's not to say the players that they put on aren't quality players. You know, they, they've done very well against Calvin. Um, 
they remember they did go six, seven, eight points ahead of Calvin. Um, and then a bit of chaos there got Calvin back into the game and Calvin took full advantage of it. They'll not get those opportunities against Donegal, but they do have the potential to go two or three points ahead of Donegal. You know, it's hard to see where Donegal are at. As I say, the, the game was brilliant. Their intensity from the, the league final against Armagh, even against Derry there, was night and day. You know, they, they'd stepped it up again. But they're not world beaters at the minute. You know, they're they're not um they're not the finished article. Now, seeing Paddy McBearty coming on, will he start this weekend? Probably. Most likely he will start. That's a that's a an extra two or three points to Donny Gall straight away. Will be seeing McCurry going off? What will that it's not injury, it's soreness and stiffness, but if it takes him thirsty or free to get over that, maybe a wee bit of it's still lingering. You just don't know what they expect. Is anybody actually injured within that own team after that game as well? Mm-hmm. It's hard to know. Adrenaline get them over the line. You know, in the end of it, um, you'll not know about injuries until Sunday night, Monday today or yesterday, um, to see if actually if it is just cramp or maybe there's some niggles going on there too. Yeah, yeah. No, it's going to be it's going to be a very very interesting game of football. I'll be I'll be watching out for that. You know, so was that thrown full back line and be interested to see how many kind of high balls Donny Gall put in and get in and around the house because. Donegal definitely have the forwards to do it. You know, can I suppose it, it, Tyrone weren't too bad last weekend, but can Tyrone kind of turn it around to get the job done this weekend, Miss Kennedy? But, 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 but you know what I'm saying? I know they still won the game, but you know what I'm kind of saying? You're like, kind of yeah, up, they're up not the ante. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I think what basically what you're saying is that Donegal and Cavan are at two different levels, and Tyrone will have to step it up again to meet the level of. Donny Galbich is a fair comment. Yeah, well, but, 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 I suppose what we threw at them, I suppose, and if anything, like I think, you know, Donny Gall are probably that a bit down more forward down the line than Cavan at the minute. So I think Cavan will, or sorry, Donny Gall will up the ante. You know, it'll be a better Donny Gall performance this weekend than we put in against them at the weekend. I know it was a good Cavan performance, but I think Donny Gall probably had the better shooters, the better forwards than we did, or do. Yeah, and I think I think that is for a comment. I think you have to think where both teams are. Donegal, the, Calvin were in Division 3 last year. Donegal were in Division 1. Ulster Championship last, or sorry, the Super 8s or Super 16s, whatever they are. Derry put in, Derry went to Donegal down Bally Buffet and Donegal put in a serious shift against them right up until the 50th minute. And then Derry sort of kicked on and went through. Had Cavan played Derry last year, I would imagine Cavan would have blew out of water because they're at a different stage altogether. Donegal have brought Jim McGuinness in and he's got a response out of him. Cavan have brought in Ray and got a response out of him as well. So both teams are, they're, I don't think the gap's closed in terms of where they were last year. And again, that like our man down, but both teams have progressed. Cavan are better than what they were last year, but so are Donegal. Mm. And Donegal went through the league, um, you know, it, putting in a lot of serious performances in there. They got promoted out of that. Cavan didn't. It is what it is. Cavan will be a harder test, or Donegal will be a harder test for them than Cavan was. They will be sore. They will be tired. They'll find it hard to get back up for it. Is Brian Duher as good a man at picking out tactics than Jim McGuinness? I don't think so. Jim McGuinness will be prepared for this game. Will they train this week? Maybe. Maybe on Thursday night they may train, but you can bet your backside. Jim McGinnis will have them down last night for a recovery session. He will have them down tonight with his plan. Here's what we're doing. Tomorrow night, it'll be have them down and he'll be saying, right, I told you what our plan was last night. Now tell me what our plan is. Mm. And then on Thursday night, they'll walk through their plan. Mm. That's the way Jim McGinnis will, will approach it. He's well used to a professional sport and setup, and he will do everything he can to have that privacy fence up around about the place that um, nobody <laughs> from outside can see what's going on. He will treat it as professional. You know, in Donegal, they probably are a wee bit different than Tyrone. A lot of the employees may be working local or so, and they'll be given time off, you know, at finishing at three o'clock just to get up uh, to convoy to, to, to speak to him and see what's going on in there. He'll be on the phone to him. Brand Deere still has his job to do. Brand Deere's, you know, getting kicked by bulls in the balls every other week. So um, <laughs> that's where he is. <laughs> Did you hear that one? Did you ever hear that one? Kick with the ball, or if you're a vet, is it? No, he did. He was out. He obviously works for the Department of Culture or Environment or so here. He's a vet. Oh, yeah. So yeah, yeah, he yeah, was out, yeah. He was He went to cast straight the bull. Yeah. And the bull kicked back <laughs> and hit him and he was knocked out. 
Whoa. Passed out. Whoa. And then he got up, came around, got up, and he says, give us a do it now. No time, just straight in the way he went. That's doer. That is doer. Not a bit of wonder. You couldn't, a, a train couldn't stop him. But, you know, he he's now up. He's got a new job in there. You can bet your backside yeah. that um, he will not be given any time off to go away and think about Tron. He'll, he'll have to have thought about that last night and tonight, unless he's took a day off. But he's a, he's a high up job. Jimmy McGinnis will be getting paid full time up in Donegal. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Jeez, Jeez wouldn't he get kicked kick by a bull after Jeez, after feet of points the night before? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Told me that. I think there's a girl actually works over in the same department of him, told me oh. that, I think. She said, oh. yeah, I was out one day and he got kicked in the bejesus. Went over, <laughs> passed out or whatever, and got up and went, <laughs> give us that. We're going to have to blurp that out. We'll have to blurp <laughs> <laughs> kicked in the notes, kicked in the notes, kicked in the notes. Who gets the job done, Sunday, Mr. Kennedy? I'm going to go with Donegal. I do, I do think Donegal. You like them? You, you, you must be back and speak in terms of the X there. Yeah, I think it's a case of that shoot and shoot often. They have so much confidence players there. And I, Arshin Gallen, he scored 1 4, not only from play the other day, but he scored 1 4 and he was a handful for McKeek to be in, in there. Um, they have players in there who are absolute athletes. You know, they, have, they can bring intensity to that game. Um, and unlike Armagh, Tyrone will not be sitting waiting for the last 10 minutes to try and pick them off. Tyrone are quite similar in a way, whereby they have to just keep the, the scoreboard ticking the whole time and hope that they can hang on towards the end. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's going to be a good game this weekend. And oh God, Kevy, here we go. Oh, lighten the beacons on Sunday in the Leinster Senior Football Championship semi-finals. You have Dublin against Offaly in Crow Park at 4pm. And of course, the game will be live on GAA Go. I'm falling asleep as I say that to you. Yeah, yeah. It's what it is. Um, we're going to have to suck it up and do, you know, I wouldn't rush into changing next year. I think you have to plan something. I think you have to plan something and say, look, the whole thing needs reviewed and re-looked at. No, I, 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 I genuinely do think there's life in the Leicester Championship yet. I'm telling you. You do? No. Well, do you know what Andrew done? Andrew said they're under 20 teams down to play Dublin B team. That's the way to, Dublin have an A, an A team for senior and a B team for senior. They could line out their B team and see what goes on. Christ. Maybe you could have two Dublin teams in Leicester Senior Championship. Oh, you could. Oh, you absolutely could. You could like and it, who someone sent me like the reserves and subs there like a few weeks ago and like that team could definitely last in Division Two at least. Uh, it was a mall. I think Mal put stuff. In Mal done. Yeah, yeah. And he does stuff like that. He annoys you sometimes, doesn't he? Who? Mal with his knowledge and his information, he's able to say here and by the oh, way, that's our reserve team. You're going. Yeah. Jesus, is not a better one. They're other have troubles. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Mal. They, they're if looking they're... at the down the, down the barrel of a gun and we're looking at pressure. Yeah, it's Mal. Yeah, Mal has been hiding since Saturday, so we'll we'll have to get him out of the. We'll we'll have to see what the crack is. Did you see? I, 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 have to, I haven't sent him it yet, but did you see the video of off the ball and Mickey Hart? Oh, he looks so pissed off, didn't oh, he? Yeah. Like I, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even mind. I wouldn't even mind. Oh, wouldn't yeah. even mind there, there was a joke being made, and Mal just like laughed. I, I don't like to be like speaking about Mal because obviously he's a, he's a treasured, valued member of the JMAC podcast. But my God, he just was smiling, and then he. Like that again. Uh, yeah, I was going. I wasn't going to send it in. I was just, going, <laughs> you know, what, I let that sit because he looks like he's, he's talking about it. Human. Uh, Human. But he was like he says he was he was he was sick, but at the same time he knows his bigger days ahead for that dairy team. Mm, I think so. I think so. Yeah, he was not a happy man. Awfully to get the job done on Sunday. Uh, in the first five minutes and ten minutes, maybe it'd be good to see. Oh, they haven't watched much Awfully, but it'd be good to see. You know, um, what players they have and who can sort of let it up from the wee bit to see what talent they have coming through. But Dublin, yeah, I don't know. That's a cricket score, isn't it? Mm, yeah, 20, 30 points, I would say. Oh, the poor Offaly lads win. Is this mad that's going to stop? And then in the other game, in the Leinster Championship, probably a competitive game, but the neither team are going to be in the Leinster Championship. That's the reality of the situation. Kildare against Loud, Croke Park, quarter to two on GA Go on Sunday, Mr. Kennedy. Yeah, and you'd have to fancy there, so that we knew with all things considered where they are, you find it hard to see Kildare actually. If, if Kildare managed to get the Leinster final this year, what an achievement! Yeah, because I think Kildare, Kildare could easily could Kildare could win on Sunday. Like you don't know, they could. I mean, Louth they're, they're 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 not what was it, two places or one place sex two places separate at them in the league. You know that's mm. that's they're they're quite close in terms of where they finished up. Um, 
Caldera have a wee bit of momentum going there now. They've got a, a, at least, you know, the win on the belt against Wicklow. Um, but no, I do think that Lies will, will commit to that on top. Yeah. I think I think the the keepers will be good. like not to play not to play Dublin. I think there'll be a lot of goals going in at the weekend. I think the keepers will not be underlying this weekend. I think it'll be it'll be anything to not win the game at the weekend, Mr. Kennedy. Uh, have a go. <laughs> just do do what you just want. Do what you just yeah, want. Yeah, man. He's shaking on the um, toss the, the coin. Players. He's <laughs> off. He's he's off his lane. Have a go. <laughs> toss the coin. Whoever whoever like heads or tails three times. Whoever gets the most gets I don't know, wins the game. I think this is Maybe score of all. You get six points. Yeah, this is the Leinster Championship, Mr. Kennedy. Whoever, I don't know, whoever who can ever can kick the most 45s, this is the reality of the situation. That is all the games we have this weekend, Mr. Kennedy. The Donegal Throne game being the pick of them without a shadow of a doubt. Mr. Kennedy, your bet of the weekend and player to watch this weekend. Um, I have a funny feeling that Oshin O'Neill is going to get a better run out this week for Armagh. I would like to see him actually starting this weekend against Down. And if he did, I think he'd be a player to watch out for. Um, I would take Armagh by any handicap that you can. It's hard to pick on this weekend to see where we are, but I think that Donegal will do well and Armagh by any handicap is out there. Mm. See Brian Fenton's back for the Offaly game this weekend? Yeah. It'll be interesting again. I'm going to be... This is what I don't mind about it, John. You know, matter what, I do like data. I do like data just to see, oh, here, there's something going on. I'll be keeping an eye for that left-hand side to see what Kilkenny now, if he starts pushing in the last half forward, do, do Dublin actually score more from the left-hand side in this half again? God, yeah, you could be a busy man. I think the scores will be flowing. The scores yeah. will be flowing. Oh, you just feel so. But like, I know we talked about this last weekend, but like, or sorry, last week, but like, just the awfully lads, like, it just... Like Christ bless us! Like what's the point? You know, even the fact that it's in Crow Park. Oh, like get it to a provincial ground. Would that make much of a difference? I don't know, but like, well, here, it's going to be it's going to be a soulless Crow Park again. You know. Yeah, and the only people seem to be wanting it there, from all accounts in the media, is Crow is is GA HQ. You know, they're the only team that seems because you hear Dublin saying, "Take us, we won't mind going there. We'll, we'll go." Even that's in Parnell. Yeah. You know, and it's in Parnell Park. The atmosphere there alone would be great. Yeah. Even you watch, I watch Dublin Championship and Parnell Park's a great pitch. It Parnell is a great Park's pitch. Fantastic, but... Great pitch. The thing yeah. is, they send their hurlers there. Their hurt Dublin hurlers play in Parnell Park an yeah. awful lot. Yeah. An awful lot. I don't know why they don't put the footballers there. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Sponsorship deals, I'd say, because I think it, it it's I think it's it's pay pair appearance for I think the Dublin lads. So I think it, it, the more times they play in Croke Park, the more money to get a week. So if GA there you go. will be sponsoring them instead of <laughs> City Stay or whatever it is now. Stay break or stay hotels or something. My God, bigger and better things for them lads the whole time. Oh, Lordy. But look, that's the Let's Chat Mr. Kennedy. And that is the JMAC podcast for another week. Kevin Kennedy, thank you so many for joining me this week. And of course, the podcast is brought to you by yorgoretch.com. Use the road JMAC podcast to get 15% off on the website. Well into the championship. Get yourself organized on orgoretch.com. Where can people find you, Mr. Kennedy? And how can people use the app? I'm down on my house at the minute, but uh, if you give me a couple of hours, I'll be up a route again. Um, no, the app, the app's available to download um, <laughs> on any of the app stores, uh, but you can find out more about it on Twitter and stuff like that. Just don't be sending the cops here. <laughs> I'm not I'm not laughing at your app. I'm laughing at that joke beforehand. Very witty. <laughs> and that's why I have you on board. It, it, maybe it's the jokes after all. It's the no, jokes. Well, I, I've, I've searched for someone for the last 36 years to someone to find my dad jokes funny. And John, you're the answer to my prayers. I'm divorcing my wife. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know to swing the other way, though, Mr. Kennedy. I don't know. I'll, I'll have to ask yourself now in a couple of minutes. Um, <laughs> yeah, dad jokes. I absolutely love them. Heard a good one earlier today. I can't remember what it was. Yeah, maybe it was today. Can't we? Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll WhatsApp it to you, Mr. Kennedy. Thanks, many for joining me, and have a great week, sir. Enjoy that sunshine. Dead on, John. See you later. Cheers, cheers, my man.